Good afternoon, Lace Jumpin' I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Fallout 4 with Sim Settlements 2. Now, let me explain. Way back in 2017, there was a mod, Sim Settlements. Basically, it was an overhaul for settlement building. The idea being settlements should be less about the player building literally everything, and your settlers just being useless paperweights who make the place a bit untidy, and instead your role should be more like that of a mayor. Where you go in, you zone various districts, you say, okay, residential over here, security over here, let's have some shops over here, and then, basically, you just left your settlers to it. You could build whatever you wanted yourself, of course, but the point is, you could go away, come back, and all of a sudden, all the houses have grown bigger. The shops are looking busier. People would actually build and expand your settlements for you. Fast forward a bit to 2020, and Sim Settlements 2 comes out. Much the same thing, but a little bit better in all sorts of minor ways. But, the real important sexy new bit was, uh, this time, it came with its own campaign, and... Uh, when I say campaign, I mean a, a proper campaign, a dedicated questline, new NPCs, new factions, new everything. A campaign in fact so ambitious, they had to release it episodically. So 2020 was just episode 1. Fast forward again to current day, they finally released the last part of this gigantic endeavour they have been working on for years. Something that has caught so much attention in the meantime that, well, you can see it literally on screen right now. If you load up Fallout 4 yourself at this exact moment in time, Bethesda itself has decided to draw attention to Sim Settlements too. So, uh, yes indeed. I've been keeping my eye on this for a long, long time. And now it is finally done. I think it is time for a brand new campaign which... Okay, let's just say I've seen some of the trailers and it looks like this is going to go some bloody wild places. Okay, step one, build a character. And uh, as I say... Going into this, we are going to be doing a whole bunch of settlement management, but we're not really going to be doing the building. As I say, we're going to be more of a mayor. So uh, when I hear the word mayor in my head, immediately, I can't help but imagine someone with a really big moustache and an otherwise somewhat unfortunate haircut. Oh yeah, that's it. Moustache, comb over, brilliant. So, say hello to Mayor Bob, though I'm going to be honest, I feel like, yes, only he refers to himself as Mayor Bob. He is, in fact, just Bob. Now, I think, you know, once upon a time, he ran to be mayor, and when he did, he set a brand new record for the lowest ever number of votes, with zero. Which was an awkward conversation around the dinner table that evening with Nora. But, that aside, this here is a man who feels like he's ready to be mayor. Like he should be mayor, in fact. So, in many ways, uh, the post-apocalypse might well suit Bob. After all, it's much easier to be mayor in a world where the alternative to doing what Bob says uh, is being cast out into the wasteland uh, where there are, in fact, zombies. So, naturally, as the focus is on settlement building, uh, we're going to be giving ourselves a bit of charisma. Now, as I understand it, yes, some of the stuff you might be able to get via local leader, there could be workarounds in the mod, so you don't necessarily need a local leader. But I feel like, you know, it would be weird not to take it when you're doing a new campaign that's all about settlements and whatnot. Though this does leave us with, yes, precious little points to allocate elsewhere, because... Uh, okay. Intelligence 3 is basic gun crafting. Strength of 3 is, yeah, basic armor crafting. Those are never gonna be bad things. Uh, but it would never hurt to have perception, you know... Uh, at a level where we can get Demo Expert. Demo Expert's incredible, but now I've got, like, nothing for agility and luck. And by the way, we should leave, like, you know, something for endurance, because, uh, yes, indeed, this playthrough is going to be on survival mode. Because I just feel like, yes, it's very difficult and weird to play Fallout 4 outside of survival mode. It just feels like the intended experience to me. So, uh, you know, having a bit of health, that would be nice too. Okay, as feels very appropriate for me... Yes, we're going to have to make sacrifices in perception and maybe, you know, fix that up a bit later. That is a terrifyingly small amount of endurance and luck for me, but we're going to have to go for it. Okay, Bob wants to be mayor, so therefore we need the charisma, damn it. Mr. Bob. That's Mayor Bob to you, thank you very much. Right, as soon as I've dealt with Shauna, he is going right back in the box. How cocky dare you, Mr. Bob, indeed. Anyway, time to get down to business, it's apocalypse o'clock. Oh well, looky what we've got here, a bunch of sorry losers who don't get to go in the vault. 
Mrs. Smith, who said I was woefully underqualified for public office. Dear oh flippy dear. Oh, this feels good. This feels so good. This is a good day for Mayor Bob and... Okay, they still let in a couple of losers who didn't vote for me, but... I guess you can't have everything. Like, those losers by the gate, they're still going to be exploded. So you know okay. what? It's a pretty decent day. Can't this thing move faster? No, it can't, Mr. Whitfield. Much like City Hall without me at the helm, it is agonizingly slow. Okay, I didn't plan this. I only noticed this right now. But the overseer has also got pretty much the same mustache as me. I was completely right with my facial hair choices. Anyway, now it's the future, my wife's dead and my child's missing, which you know, very sad. But on the other hand, this is going to free up a lot of time to work on my brand new post-apocalyptic political career. So, okay, let's get out into the world and start exploring, because uh, pretty much from the get-go, this is, if you want it to be, a whole bloody new game. Though yes, on the way out, just a quick reminder, as we're playing survival mode, there are a whole bunch of extra rules you don't find elsewhere in Fallout 4. Such as, for example, it's a much more high-stakes game. Everybody hits hard and nobody's got that much health, which applies to both me and the enemies. One way or another, gunfights end fast. On top of that, you've got to be really careful around even basic rad roaches because a single bite can make me ill. All right, and diseases can be really, really bloody vicious, potentially. Let's just, uh, yes, finish off of these guys if we can. Nice and easy. Even, yeah, without too much perception, too much agility. Get space it, rad roaches. 10mm uh, will do the job uh, very nicely. Just, yes, it's worth bearing in mind. There's a lot of complications in survival mode we'll be getting to as they come up. Speaking of which, as we just plug on our Pip-Boy for the first time... Oh yeah, check out that weight limit. Only 105, dear oh flippin' dear. And most crucially of all, saving, what's that? In survival mode, you save by sleeping. So yeah, it's a bloody high stakes game. I love it. Anyway, let's get these doors open and begin Mayor Bob's exciting sexy new life. Right, out of the vault, back to Sanctuary, and uh, yes indeed. As I say, pretty much immediately, this game is now going to start diverging if that's what you want to do. Oh, and look who's still uh, hanging around in Sanctuary. Oh, sir, it's been just horrible. Two centuries with no one to talk to, no one to serve. Serves you right for calling me Mr. Bob, you dick. So, Codsworth's going to go and search the neighbourhood for Sean, but uh, no, I'm just going to let him get on with that. Honestly, as I say, I've got more important things to be getting on with, and in particular, yes indeed, this is what we want right here. Sitting on top of the Sanctuary workbench, we have got Robco Backyard Robotics Issue 1, giving me immediately all the components I need to build my own recruitment radio beacon. Which is, as I understand it, how we kick off the brand new campaign. Pop you down right there and... I literally just leveled up for putting my first object down in my first settlement. Okay, this is a sign for Mayor Bob. This is going to be a good run. Right, hook that into a bit of a power. Magnificent and... With the flick of a switch, our new adventure has begun. Because in just a second, as I understand it we might be getting a rather special new visitor. Here we go. Someone's moved in. On top of that, I officially now have not enough food, not enough water, not enough defense, not enough anything. So, okay, buddy, we've got... Okay, never mind. A lot of people just arrived, actually. Right, arguably, we're not quite ready for all of you. Wait your turn. We need to find the important person first. Hang on, there was someone around here, I swear it. Hey, hello there. If I'm not mistaken, you're the fella I've been looking for. And hello there, sexy, it's the Mysterious Stranger. Now, this is really rather good, by the way. One, this mod is full of new voice acting, and uh, from what I've heard in the trailer, it's really rather good. Like, this is very often where fully voiced new campaign mods fall down a bit, because uh, it is difficult to get professional quality voice actors in. It's a really impressive skill, but everything I've heard of this mod so far is really quite impressive. 
And on the other hand, uh, you may also be wondering at this point, how precisely is my character, you know, a voice protagonist, going to reply? Well, if I've understood this right, thanks to some rather clever chicanery at the back end, uh, what's going on here is, uh, they've taken the existing Soul Survivors lines uh, and reapplied them into the new mod's conversations. So, my character might be a bit, you know, vague on the detail, the new characters might be doing the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to describing complex concepts, but yes, we've actually got proper conversations going with the original voice lines, which is really rather bloody cool. Also, yes indeed buddy, I assume you're here because of my amazing radio broadcast, and honestly, if I was Mayor Bob, I'd be feeling pretty good right now. Like, it's day one, arguably like a minute one, of my new mayoral term, and already four people have come to move into my neighborhoods. You hear my broadcast? <laughs> You're sharp. Yeah, I heard your broadcast. Sounded as if you were starting some kind of settlement. Is that about the right of it? Okay, I'm gonna be honest, buddy, you're being a little bit rude here, given your refusal to stand up to face me. But I'll meet you halfway and come over here to say hi. You looking for a new place to settle? Not me, no. But I have something that might help you with those that are. Here, catch. And here we go, the Assam Sensor 2077 model lets me set down plots where, yes indeed, as I was saying earlier, it's where my settlers can build things, so I don't always have to. So my settlement can build itself as time goes by. And this here is one of the crucial differences between Sim Settlements the original and Sim Settlements 2. Sim Settlements 2's campaign isn't just a big new narrative thing, it's also functionally a tutorial for all the mechanics. So they're gonna get introduced nice and sensibly, so I can, you know, keep up and don't miss anything obvious. So, okay, let's have a nice chat, me and you, about precisely how these things work. It's called an ASAM sensor. If you're gonna be building settlements, these things are what you'll want to use. And seriously, this is good voice acting. I appreciate this. Yeah? Why is that? Mm, I think a demonstration is in order. Place that ASAM down on the ground somewhere. Go ahead. Any old spot will do. Okay, this house over here, obviously, as you know, not in good shape. We can't really fix that up or anything. Just to break you down, a buddy. Magnificent. Clear the surrounding area too. And now it's time for the Sim Settlement section of the builder. So... By the looks of it, yes, the arrow indicates presumably, like, the front entry point. So just align that up to here. This'll do nicely. Let's have a chat about this, buddy. Congratulations! You've made the smart move of choosing Rocky brand ASAP sensors for your city planning needs. Unlike other less reliable multi-purpose sensors, Rothko brand ASAM sensors offer the level of versatility and connectability that you deserve. Rothko brand ASAM sensors, America's number one sensor solution. Distributed partnership with Voltec. Nicely done. Don't mind the ASAM, it's just scanning the area for materials. So okay, just does a little bit of a wibble here. Figuring out what's... Not sure I want to be scanned. Like, you know, what if it decides that I'm a material it can build with? I'm just going to stay away from it. Now for this next part, I'm going to pretend to be a settler. It's come to work for you. So just play along, all right? <clears throat> Boy, I sure am glad I found this settlement to live in. But oh no, there are no homes available. And I don't know how to build one myself. I guess I'll just have to rely on whoever runs this place to build a home for me. Howdy there, visiting settler. I'm the local mayor. Don't you worry about that, because as you can see all around you, there are a whole bunch of homes you could move into already, you stupid bastard. But you know what, no, he's been nice, he's given me a thing. We're going to play along, damn it. Don't sell yourself short. You're right. If only I had a little guidance. I could probably build something myself. But wait, what is this? Why, it's an ASAM! Just the thing I need! You know, thinking about it, I'm suddenly getting suspicious of the mysterious stranger who just showed up giving me one, and precisely one ASAM, and is now giving me a really big speech about how amazing ASAMs are. Why do you get the feeling that yes, I'm about to get shaken down, potentially? Keep playing along, go on, why not? What do you need it for? That is a great question. You see, with an ASAM, there's no barrier for entry when it comes to building something. 
All I'd need to do is follow the step-by-step -step instructions provided by the ASAM. Here, let me show you. And now he just gets on with that, so the settlement starts slowly taking shape, and I don't need to do it myself. Though, of course, you know, there's nothing to stop me just using the traditional tools to build more houses if that's what I want to do. The directions that the ASAM provides are so easy to understand, even a savage could do it with no problem. Okay, as much as I'm enjoying the sales pitch, I can't help but notice, um... Okay. This weather, that wind. I'm distinctly feeling like a rad storm might be rolling in. So, uh, like, you know, I appreciate you're probably selling these on commission or something, but... I do not trust this weather one bit. A man home is his castle, and no one understands that better than Rocco. Our ASAM sensor technology offers citizens unrivaled freedom of DIY home design. Built using locally sourced materials and designed via our patented dynamic easy build blueprint software. With Rocco brand ASAM sensors, everyone can have a roof over their head. After all, a warm and dry citizen is a productive citizen. And there you have it. A fully built home. Ready for habitation by some lucky wastelander. And you barely had to lift a finger. Not too shabby, huh? So now that you've seen what they can do, what do you think? Are ASAM sensors something you might be interested in? Oh, go on then, why not? Yes, indeed. What's the catch, buddy? Because I suspect you're about to pull out a very large bill. What's the catch? Oh, I saw that coming, did you? You're right. There is a catch. Unfortunately, right now, I only have the one sensor on me. However, I can provide you with more. And once you have more, I can show you even more stuff you could build with them. Homes are just the start. But first, I'm gonna have to ask for a little task done in return. Oh, go on. What do you need, buddy? Of course. Just tell me what you need help with. All right, here it is. I got me a workshop in a town called Concord. Nice enough place, fairly quiet. Well, at least it was. But just recently, I returned from a trade run to find the entire town overrun by raiders. And now I can't get near my workshop. A small group I could deal with, but there's too many for me to take on alone. So I'm gonna need someone to help take them out. So there it is. That's the job. You help me get rid of these raiders, I'll give you more ASAMs. And show you how to build even more stuff with them. Before we do though, okay. There are a couple of bits and pieces we're going to need to take care of, mysterious stranger. Let's head to Concord and show those raiders who's boss. Lead on. I mean, I was gonna say number one, I'm not sure what your name is yet, but um... Okay, apparently he's still feeling a bit shy. Number two though, yes indeed, we need to... I swear you've just got into a house that's got rad roaches in it, but um... Okay, fine. No problem whatsoever, I guess. We need to get ourselves, yeah, some decent ammo, armor, meds, etc, etc. So, uh, let's just have, you know, quick poke around here. Because, oh yeah. Don't forget, of course, you're flipping special. So, ooh, that one's tricky. I feel like I wouldn't mind. You know what? Tiny bit more agility. Okay, that is never going to hurt. I was saying my agility was a bit lower. What we really need, though, is, yes, indeed, some new clothing, a bobby pin, oh, flip me, antibiotics. That is, uh, yes, not the most common drop in survival mode. That there, not bad. Uh, and military fatigues are amazing, too. I mean, agility plus two, uh, straight off the bat. That's one of the best bits of gear in the game, though, uh, I'm gonna be honest, in many ways... It feels like it's not really what Mayor Bob ought to be wearing. Like, you know, he's not Commander Bob, he's not Sergeant Bob, but he's a Mayor Bob, damn it. He should be dressed nicely. Oh, now you see, this could be more like it. Oh, yeah. A clean grey suit to match my moustache. Now this, this feels like what I should be wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, and even better, now this is the right hat. For Mayor Bob. Right now, yes, I've got a pitiful 93 hit points. But if I wear the sea captain's hat, representing that I am captain over this community, straight up to 104. Lovely. That endurance boost. That is brilliant. And I tell you what, in terms of colour, we're like, you know, the greyish blue, white and a bit of gold. It actually matches my suit. Okay, Mayor Bob, the future is looking good for you. As for weaponry, I can just afford to, yes, get my 10mm up to a harden. So, you know what? That'll do as a starting point just for the minute. And as for my first perk of the game, okay. As I'm going to be, yes, running a fairly low intelligence but high charisma. And for the time being, yes, while I would normally default towards Lone Wanderer, 
I do have the mysterious stranger with me. Okay. I'd say Idio Savant is never going to be a bad idea. Just because, uh, yeah. When you're running low intelligence, the amount of ridiculous XP gain you could get off this is... Uh, it's just stupid and I love it. And yes, just one more quick note on survival mode, of course. You've probably noticed down the bottom right if you've never played it yourself. Hunger, thirst, and tiredness do eat into your AP. Meaning, obviously, you know, limitation in vats, limitation in sprinting, etc, etc. So, uh, how about we have, uh, yes indeed, just a little quick nap, getting a hungrier by the second toe. There we go, well rested. There's my save down, a magnificent. All right, Mysterious Stranger, guns out. Let's go get ourselves a whatever the cook's in your workshop. Presumably more ASAMs. And on the way past, of course, never forget to grab yourself a couple of frag grenades. Lovely. And we've barely even got started before, of course. We run into the best character of the game. Oh my goodness. Hello there, dog meat. Welcome to my society. You get to live in my nice house. No horrible shack for you. Okay, tail as old as time and nip round the corner and I'm guessing, by any chance, does this mod literally mod out Preston Garvey? Given, when you think about it, this is a campaign all about, you know, settlement building, which is pretty much what the Minutemen are. So, I mean, you could argue, do we even really need Preston Garvey anymore? Just pop over to here, put some bullets on you. Very, very nice indeed. 10 millimeter, nice and bloody accurate. Barely any spread on the damn thing. I'm going to stick to the back streets. Just try and flank them while Preston Garvey deals with the front hand. Uh, I thought that was a radar. It's just like a fire hydrant or something. Uh, right, dog meat. You're up first. Just a pop out. And uh, I thought you might be in cover over there. Lovely. And uh, level up too. All right. There's still something going on. Gosh darn it. That's Preston Garvey. He's not dead or replaced. Dear oh flippin' dear. Hey, up here on the balcony. I've got a group of settlers inside. The raiders are almost through the door. Grab that laser musket and help us, please! I'm so sorry, but I'm kind of busy doing my own thing. We still need to clear out all the raiders. The sounds of it, there's still some inside that museum. I'll stay out here and keep guard. You should head inside and help those people. No, Mysterious Stranger. No, no, no. We definitely don't want to do that, okay? We can just do our own campaign. Completely independent of Preston Bloody Garvey, but... Oh, you cocking, bleeding heart. Okay, also of note, I have no idea off the top of my head whether you could put armor over the clean suit. I'm not sure you can, actually. No, you most definitely can't. Which also means, yes, rather awkwardly, I just took off my suit and dressed up like this in front of the stranger. So, um, okay, he's definitely potentially going to get the wrong idea here. Okay, the Minuteman outfit, meanwhile, will take armor, but I really don't want to give Preston Garvey the wrong idea. Okay, this will do for now, but we need to find something better down the line. And for level 3, go on, I'll take a rank of Gunslinger, because, yeah, in survival mode in particular, pistols do just have a role in your rotation, purely because uh, they're lighter, and you're desperately shy on bloody carry capacity. Oh yeah, 29 damage from a 10mm, now that's a good result. Okay, now fortunately, I already know my way around this area nice and easy. Get into cover over on this side to get behind the snipers up top. Don't worry about any of that nonsense. And uh, all right, buddy. I see ya. I see ya. Don't worry about me. Reload. Plenty of a 10 millimeter. No idea how you just lost me, but okay. Nice easy couple of shots in the chest as long as he doesn't get a shot off. Is that a double barreled shotgun? Because if it is, uh, well that thing is just an absolute cocking beast in the early game. Now where precisely? Oh, I knew there was. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, blimey. Yep, 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 yep. Let's just get into some good uh, cover round the back over here. No trouble. Aside from, yes, the trouble we're in. Okay, dog meat. If there's anything you could do, that would be great. Where is... Uh, I think it was someone up and to the right who was shooting me. There we go. I see ya. I see ya. Right. Go. Double shot will take you out. Survival mode. High bloody stake shootouts. Keep on keeping on. Two people in the next room. If we're lucky. Yeah, we might be able to take them out using this thing. Bit of potluck, really. It very, very rarely works. Now. They're coming... 
There also might be someone behind me. There's definitely someone over there, which is delightful. I'm not sure how we managed to walk past each other, but we did. So just two shots, manual shots for the best here. Pop out, hello over there, and that is, you're a bit tricky to hit. Okay, hang on. What have I got set right now? Frag grenades! That'll do the job, but do we really need that? Going to third person. Okay, the camera's not exactly helping me here. Oh, there we go. Two to finish you off. Lovely. He's definitely got a friend, though. How on earth did me and that guy over there miss each other? I have no idea, but there's definitely going to be one more. Just to rush our target and... Okay, why are none of the raiders where I'm expecting them to be? Oh, I think Dogmeat may have just found him. Hello over there. Right, you just hold still while my dog bites you. Down you go. Right, that's everybody that's there for now. Because two more spawn in when you get up top. Marvellous. There we go. There's the two that spawn in. Just nice and quiet. And uh, okay. If I can, I wouldn't mind yet. Just tossing a cocktail at them. Because it could just kill all of them. So go and bang. Oh, that's the stuff. Throwables. Beautiful. Man, I don't know who you no, are. Man. No, 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 no. No, we're not doing this, Preston. Not here for you. Here for this thing. Beautiful. Oh, never mind. Okay, we, we've definitely got trouble already. Just take out the one up on the roof. Okay, I think everyone's already... Never mind. Everyone's very much spawned in. Got it. Oh, this is, this is maybe a bit awkward, though. Which is... Okay, Preston's now stepped outside to shoot those guys. And now, now he's not here to have this conversation, if I were to want to continue, so. Right, what's Sturgis going to say if Preston's not here anymore? Hey, Sturgis. Any day now, new guy. Okay, well, that was a weird response. What? Don't look at me, new guy. I just fix stuff. Okay, so... I think I've just broken Fallout 4 in a way I've never encountered before. If you step outside, Preston goes with you, and then he just sort of refuses to come back in. Oh, but the stranger's here now. This this isn't what I was expecting. Hello there, Mr. Stranger. Just looking to trade a little. I mean, I wasn't really. I was just looking to, you know, have a nice chat about maybe well then again. Okay, there are more raiders. Fine, I'll go and deal with bloody everything. Luckily, there is, yes, one nice, easy way to deal with all of this nonsense. Right, pop outside, I hop in the old uh, power armor and whatnot. But yes, now at this point, I want to make my enemy's enemy my friend. And to do that, we just do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. So straight down, get away from all of these guys with the power armor I can, yeah, tank a few shots even in survival mode. And then, yes, once we get to about here-ish, just let my AP come back for a second. We just want to be going straight past here. Activate my new friend and start cocking, sprinting as fast as we can in this direction. And ideally, if we're lucky, the Deathclaw will not even come after me. By the time it's like, you know, properly aware as to what's going on. Okay, I think it may have eaten my dog, though. Oh, there's definitely some enemies. Enemy is my friend going on the end of the street here. I'm pretty sure, yeah. The raiders are now tossing molotovs at the death claw, which is going to do a lot of damage. Throwables in survival mode. Bloody how they cocking hurt. Problem is, okay, we need to hop down. Ouch! Watch where you're aiming. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to land on you. That was a mistake. Where is he? Because if we could, yeah, blow up the truck while he's standing next to it. Then obviously that can really knacker his limbs. Where's he got himself to? He's definitely bethesda into a wall. Beautiful. Well done, Fallout 4. I'm going to go to the speakeasy to reload the area to see if maybe we can get him back outside again. Also, by sheer coincidence, there's a second sea captain's hat here. Here we go, a sea captain buddies forever. Okay, step back outside, and... Okay, he's cocking back, and now he's going to come in this direction. Right, now, just quickly, 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 quick... We didn't blow up the thing quickly enough. Okay, keep blowing up the thing, keep blowing up the... Uh-oh. Okay, well, he's killing all my friends before he's killing me, so honestly, this is... This is absolutely fine, and... Oh, he's almost dead already. Oh, well, that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. Just put some more bullets into you. I kind of was hoping we could, like, you know, very dramatically take you out with all of the exploded cars and whatnot, but as it turns out, we're fine. 
That was... I mean, you just took down a death claw. <laughs> Color me impressed. All the sound from our firefight must have lured the blast thing out. Where'd you get that power armor from? You know what? Never mind. What about them folks, the raiders trapped inside the museum? Did you manage to help them? So, um, hang on, just also while we're doing this. Okay, I think my dog needs medical attention first, so... I think when I'm in a conversation, I can't provide medical assistance to my dog. All right. You held up your side of the bargain. The raiders have been dealt with. Now it's my turn to deliver. If you'd just like to follow me, we'll get you your ASAMs. I will do that in just a second, but I find the sound of my dog suffering, yes, like, really, really perturbing. And there we go. God damn raiders. They really trashed the place. Okay, so... Yes, indeed. It would feel like potentially broken sensor. I'm guessing this is bad news. Some air fresheners, a new coat of paint, and it'll all be good as new. Despite the mess they made, it doesn't look like they took anything important. Most of my equipment is still here, including your reward. Here, one whole box of ASAMs to do with as you see fit. You earned them. And there we flip it go together with the city manager holotape, which is sort of like the mod setup tape. So you can, you know, customize it to how you want it to be. If you remember, I also promised to show you more things you could build with ASAM sensors. I'll meet you back at your settlement. Don't keep me waiting long now. And the stranger just jogs on back to Sanctuary. Though I'm pretty sure I actually had, like, um, yes, a lovely, a lovely, sexy level up already. Because, yeah, early gamer, especially on survival mode, uh, you level up fast. Because you do get more experience as a reward for it being a higher risk scenario. Oh, yeah. Let's get local leader going on. Beautiful. I have no idea if it does anything in this mod. I just feel I ought to have it. I'm also just kind of curious what precisely happens inside the Museum of Freedom now if, like, you know, you go in having never really bothered to speak to Preston Garvey in the first place. I'm not sure I've ever done that before. That was a pretty amazing display. Preston Garvey, Commonwealth Minuteman. Okay, so he does actually have a little bit of a belated introduction. Lovely. Beyond that, though, pretty standard. They are still going to mosey their way over to Sanctuary, so okay, that's fine. They can have a place in my new society, I guess. And also, uh, Gristle gives me a short hunting rifle. Not bad, not bad at all. That's actually a good gun in the early game. Though, yes, do not forget that holotape. This one's actually rather important. In particular, if you want to just unlock everything straight away and have an experience where you can just play with all the toys and figure it out for yourself, you're welcome to do so, that's what the cheats are for. But no, 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 I'm not going to be doing that instead. Options Wizard basically means that set the difficulty for this entire mod. So automated's close to a free build mode, if you will. Basically, you just lay down plots, people will build them, towns will just get bigger and bigger as you come back and visit. If you just want to enjoy it that way, that's the mode for you. City Simulator makes things a bit trickier. You can lay down the plots, but obviously they're not going to grow that fast or that much unless you've actually set up the city correctly, making sure everybody is getting what they need to get, the town is profitable in terms of its junk and cap economy, a much more interesting experience. And then we've got hardcore mode. So yes, that basically just means that everything's a little bit more vicious. Now, I may go over to that later in this run, but I feel like for the time being, City Simulator is just fine. So there is a proper challenge to it, but you know, there's still a bit of leniency to it while I'm learning the ropes. Also, I just noticed my power armor is absolutely running on fumes right now, so... Okay, rather embarrassingly, I haven't actually quite got it back to Sanctuary. And if I just sort of uh, limp back to Sanctuary with it, then um, potentially, yes, like, Preston's going to beat me there. So, okay, like, bare minimum, we're going to limp it over the bridge. If anybody asks, by the way, this is the mayor beep. It's the beeping that happens when the rightful designated mayor is inside the power armor. Here we go. We're right by the Sanctuary sign. That's officially inside Sanctuary. That's all absolutely fine. Just hop out of that to be beautiful. All right, time to show you what else ASAMs can do. Now, generally speaking, people need a roof over their head, food in their bellies, and a place to be working. Those are my only choices? You want more things to build? Huh. Well, right now, ASAMs can only build homes, farms, and places to work. For most people, that's been enough. But if you're wanting more, maybe we can talk about that later. For now, let me show you what your ASAMs can currently do. 
So, okay, we're going to have to do a bit more of the campaign going around and about if we want to, yes, have a more and more types of plots. Okay, show me. All right. Place down a sensor again. But this time, we'll use one configured for food production. Bloody hell, there are ten people here now, because I'm guessing Preston's already officially a member. So, uh, right. Right, 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 right. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this area back here into our lovely, a lovely agricultural district. After all, this is traditionally where I like, you know, just grow up more and more melons at anyway. So if we just take the children's play area out of all of this, this could work very nicely, in fact. So I could just put that down, or I could put it down with, yes, foundations, if that's what I feel like I need, just because, you know, the ground isn't that level. But let's just see what it looks like, yes, just like... As is if I just slap it down like this. Yes! Gone are the days of citizens complaining over those ever-increasing grocery store prices. Thanks to Rocker Brand ASAM Sensors. Never has it been easier for citizens to grow their own mouth-watering produce. It's so simple, even the wife and kids will want to get their hands dirty. For the finest in homegrown food, look to Rocker Brand ASAM Sensors. All right, we've built a home, a farm. Next thing is a place to work. You know, somewhere folks can perform a little industry. Gather scrap or do a bit of scaving, that kind of thing. Go ahead, put down an ASAM that's programmed for that. And this is where things get a bit more interesting. Because yes, indeed, in this mod, people actually have to be productive to keep their town properly functioning. There we go, that new UI up in the top right. So right now the town is not really in possession of uh, anything, really. Handful of caps that have been handed over by a handful of people living inside, yes, that one house we built. But, crucially, building materials are zero out of zero. If we want people to build their own houses, etc, etc, there needs to be local scrap. Now I can just give them scrap, just to, you know, get them started. But in the end, the town's gonna have to be self-sufficient. Right, bright new day, given the light was starting to fade, let's say that yes, people live on that side of town, and work on this side of town. So as yeah, we've got a couple of uh, broken down old buildings we can barely do anything with over here. So here we go, just slap down a one industrial plot right over here on a nice proper flat land. And on top of that, yes, industrial buildings are now gathering junk for me, but they need to have somewhere to store it. Now it looks like, yes, once this guy's done building this, this is the new little kind of floating interface, by the way, yes, that will generate a tiny bit of storage, but here we go. One large scrap storage crate right here will do the job beautifully. Times are tough. There's no bones about it. Even useful people are starting to feel the pinch. But you can rely on Rocco to provide fulfilling employment alternatives. With just one handy-dandy Robco brand ASAM sensor, citizens need never fear unemployment again. Able to legally gather and store useful materials, your citizens will wonder how they ever did without a Robco industrial unit. Just one more in the long line of technological marvels brought to you by Robco brand ASAM sensors. I like Robco Rob. He's great. Well, there we are. All basic necessities covered. Although folks won't be happy with the bare essentials forever. Eventually they will want more. Now it's up to you what type of ASAMs you put down, but do try and keep in mind what folks in your settlements will be needing. Excuse me, hello. Uh, don't shoot now, I don't mean no harm. I uh, hope you don't mind the intrusion. I couldn't help but notice all the commotion. What are you two youngins up to here? That is, if you don't mind me asking. Fixing up these buildings, are you? I do enjoy a stereotypical rambling old man just coming in and asking questions. This is great. Maybe. Why do you ask? Hold up now, don't be dismissive. <clears throat> Actually, we just finished building these. Is that so? Built them by yourself, did you? Well, you two looking to settle down here, or...? This settlement belongs to my friend here, not me. I was just demonstrating some... Construction techniques using this ASAM sensor. Construction techniques? Using that gadget there? <laughs> Sounds like Brahmin dung to me. Are you telling me you made all this using that gizmo? Okay, you know what? We need to get into this. I did indeed, good sir. Thanks to the fine folks at Rogkawa. It was easy. Easy? 
I've never known building to be easy. Hey, here's a suggestion. Why not offer the old timer residence here? Let him experience the benefits of sensors firsthand. That is, if you'd be interested in staying here. I'll admit, seeing you two build with those doodads did pique my curiosity. Huh. And it might be nice to settle down somewhere for a while. It is getting dangerous out there, especially for a scav past his prime. But, uh, would an old man like me really be welcome here? Well, ten other people have already walked over the bridge and they're all just citizens now, so I'm not really sure I'm legally allowed to say no. What do you say? Wanna work for me? Okay then, you got yourself a deal. Old Paul is at your service. Now if uh, you'd excuse me a second, I uh, want to check out this here sensor doohickey. How about that? Your ASAMs have already attracted their first resident. With that, I'd say our exchange of services is complete. Enjoy your ASAMs. I'm sure you'll put them to good use. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta get back to the hardware store. Got a lot of important work to begin on with. Alright, so we got ourselves... Ooh. Hang about here. Important work, you say? Let me just put on my extremely fancy suit for a second. What kind of work? I've got some family matters I need to take care of. Some personal stuff. I'm sure you understand. Okay, somebody's got a tragic backstory. I mean, to be honest, so do I. We should compare notes. It was good working with you. Yeah, you too. I should get going. Oh, and good luck with your settlement. Hey, where's that ASAM fella going? I wanted to ask him a few questions. And blimey, I can now offer to help. I'm going to be honest, this is potentially going to be, uh, yes, difficult. Because it's my first day using these things. But, okay, we'll figure it out together, old Paul. We'll get this done. You're the head honcho around this place, right? Well, I've got a request to make. You see... I noticed that there's a whole bunch of new people around here, so I'm thinking it might be best to put down a few more of these here censored thingamabobs. You know, to make sure everybody's got a home, a place to work, and not to mention enough food. Okay, Paul, I was literally about to do that, okay? You do not need to be ordering me around. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm the one wearing the captain hats. I don't appreciate people telling me what to do. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you what to do. Just suggesting. Let's get on with a business here. One more industrial plot right next to this thing. They do sort of, uh, yes, clip together because they are two by two. So that could just go next to there. You're going to have yourself a neighbor. Beautiful. Now, I will admit, my agricultural plot could possibly have done with a foundation. So can we, like, you know, fix that retroactively? Because you seem to be literally struggling to get onto the farm right now. Okay, I'm going to be honest, I was just trying to, you know, refresh the plot and add foundations, uh, and then it exploded. Oh, that's better. I've built another one that's actually got foundations, and uh, the foundations are sort of, yes, fairly nicely integrated into the ground. So, uh, okay, that's more flipping like it. Now we've got an actual proper, yes, not floating farm. Lovely. So, straight away, slap down a couple more of them. People start building all of that for me. Beautiful. Now, yes, we could definitely do with, you know, maybe more residential space. Well, we could definitely fit, like, you know, a two on a plot when we've demolished an old house down. So, that's a good in terms of, uh, yes, number of houses around here. But, yeah, now people are just going to start building their own thing. And they're not all going to be the same. They can be any number of things. And if I decide I don't like a particular designer, I can change it. King Gath is the person who's responsible for this mod, as I understand it. So, yes, many designs are his. But you can also download all sorts of other packs from other people just to increase the diversity of building in your town. So here we go. Someone in my agricultural district decided to build a small pond. So presumably, yes, they could like, you know, grow stuff that needs lots of water. Then we've just got ourselves, yep, bit of corn, bit of a mute fruit over here. Possibly you're just growing like herbs or whatnot. So maybe this is just like, you know, a generic gardening outpost to support the others. I don't know. And if I don't like it, I can just change it. Here we go. There are melons growing literally here already. Let's go for a melon farm. Though I do need to, yes, pay the local building materials uh, to make it happen. Because I was the one that chose to tear down what they built. Meanwhile, over on this side, okay. 
So this would appear to be like, yes, by the looks of it, industrial building, gathering or storage, whereas this one is, yes, where they go to do the gathering. This is just a scrap heap. Meanwhile, back in a residential, we've got ourselves... Uh, okay, whoever lives here, you just basically embarrass the mysterious stranger. Because uh, he built this complete nonsense shack, and you've gone and built a completely solid cocking vault with a heavy bulkhead door. That's... I mean, I'm going to be honest, that's better than I would have done. Like, you know, already, the ASAMs are paying for themselves in that regard. And if need be, uh, if Preston Garvey starts getting annoying, we just put him in here and lock the door. Okay, for the time being though, yes, couple of things we're gonna need to take care of ourselves. In particular, water. Because we haven't unlocked, yes, like, you know, city infrastructure plots or anything. So in which case, that one's up to me. Now we do have, yes, rather conveniently, a lovely source of water. So let's just put down a lovely big water purifier. Get a bit of power on that. So here we go. Check out just a basic house here. Every house would ideally like to have access to... Uh, Tiny bit of power, tiny bit of water, tiny bit of food. So, yeah, for the time being, basically power needs to be equivalent to every person plus any other infrastructure I want to keep running, like, say, radio towers or whatnot. So that's fine. Just run some wires between, yes, my starting generator up top and these houses over here. But yeah, we're going to need a lot more wires down to the water too. And, oh, blimey, someone's coming in in a hurry. Hello there, who are you precisely? Hi. Um, hey, are you the one who put out the radio message? Is this your settlement? It's very nice. We had to leave our home. Everyone was getting sick. So, if you're looking for people and it's no trouble, well, we'd like to live here. Okay, we're getting bloody overcrowded in a hurry, but um, when you say sick people, how contagious are we talking? What was that about people getting sick? Don't worry, none of us are sick. That's why we left, so we wouldn't catch it. I don't know what caused the illness. Maybe bad water? Now we just want somewhere new to live. Maybe here, if you'll have us? Okay, you can come, but if people start getting sick, you're going inside that mysterious prison building we constructed. And with that bloody hell, I will say, I'm not sure I've ever had a sanctuary that's this busy. And that there's going to be a problem, because yes, if we want more water and more power, I'm going to need some, like, you know, uh, specialist resources, uh, in particular copper. We're going to be needing a lot of copper. Now, it's not the rarest thing in the world, but there's only going to be a finite amount of it inside Sanctuary Hills itself. So, uh, in which case, if we want to keep this town growing, we're going to need to either get out there to support it, or alternatively, invest more in flipping industry. But how about having made, yes, a lovely start here, we call it a part there. Because, uh, well, right now, this may seem like, you know, a fairly nice little low-stake city building thing. You know, just going around, uh, trying to keep up with supplies, etc, etc, etc. I know for a fact this is going to some much, much bigger places uh, as time goes by. Uh, let's just say uh, our settlements are going to start drawing attention. This mod has its own campaign uh, endgame, and uh, yes, indeed. As I say, this is the beginning uh, of a brand new short series uh, digging into that, as well as, you know, just the joy of Fallout 4 survival mode uh, in general. So, uh, join me next week as we go scaffing, uh, and then, indeed, uh, we need to go and catch up with our new mysterious stranger friend, uh, because uh, it's pretty clear he's got some more stuff for me, too. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you join me next week for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout 4 with Sim Settlements 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.